ASHTO T2 and ASTM D75 are the standard practice for sampling aggregates. Some of the purposes of obtaining samples would include acceptance or rejection of materials, control of operations at the site of use, control of the product at the source of supply, or preliminary investigation as a potential supply. Sampling is just as important as the actual testing. Therefore, the person obtaining the sample should take every necessary precaution to ensure that the sample they obtain shows the true nature and condition of the material being sampled. There are many locations from where a sample might be obtained, but the four primary locations include a flowing aggregate stream, a conveyor belt, a stockpile or transportation unit, and a roadway from the base or the sub-base. Sampling from a flowing aggregate stream, sampling from a conveyor belt, and sampling from a roadway share some commonalities in the fact that the samples will be obtained at random. Furthermore, at least three equally sized increments will be selected. If a random sampling plan cannot be agreed upon, ASTM D3665 standard practice for random samples of construction materials may be helpful. When sampling from a stockpile or transportation unit, try to avoid sampling of coarse aggregates or mixtures of coarse and fine aggregates, especially when the sample is being obtained for grading purposes. If the circumstances presented make it necessary to obtain a sample of these types of aggregates from a stockpile or transportation unit, then create a sampling plan. The sampling plan should build confidence in all parties when the results are obtained. Furthermore, using power equipment may be helpful in obtaining a representative sample. When power equipment is not available, samples from stockpiles should be made up of at least three increments, taken from the top third, midpoint, and bottom third of the volume of the pile. A board shoved vertically into the pile just above the sampling point aids in preventing further segregation. The responsibility for obtaining the sample will depend upon the reason for which the sample is being obtained. As an example, the manufacturer and contractor are responsible when the sample is being obtained for control of production at the source or control of work at the site. But it is the purchaser who is responsible when samples are being obtained to be used for acceptance or rejection as a potential source. And it is the seller who is always responsible for providing the appropriate sampling equipment. And whenever the sample is being obtained as part of a preliminary investigation, the sample shall be obtained by the party responsible for the development of that potential source. When samples are being obtained for quality tests, it is best whenever possible to obtain that sample from the finished product. The number of samples obtained will depend upon the criticality and variation of the properties that are to be measured. Furthermore, the amount of each sample will depend upon the type and number of tests that are to be conducted. And lastly, if it becomes necessary to ship our samples, be sure that they are shipped in suitable containers that are so designed to prevent loss or contamination. Furthermore, we want the containers to be suitable to prevent damage from possible mishandling. Let's now review the key steps of this procedure beginning with sampling from a conveyor belt. 
When sampling from a conveyor belt, one of the first things that we must do is stop the conveyor belt and insert two templates that conform to the shape of the belt. Space the templates so that the material in between will yield an increment of the required mass. Carefully scoop the material in between the templates into a suitable container. You can now collect the fines with a dustpan and broom. Be sure to obtain at least three equal increments and then recombine these increments to form your field sample. Lastly, make sure that your sample meets or exceeds that which is required for a given aggregate size. Now let's review sampling from a stockpile. This is for fine aggregate only. First, remove the outer layer of the stockpile to expose the material underneath. You can use a shovel or power equipment to achieve this. Insert the appropriate sampling tube. And unlike the other procedures, when sampling from a stockpile, you obtain at least five increments. Let's now review sampling from a flowing aggregate stream. When sampling from a flowing aggregate stream, be sure to use a device which will hold the required amount of material without overflowing. Take each increment from the entire discharge stream. Obtain a minimum of three equal increments. Then, just as before, combine these increments to form your field sample. Then ensure that the size of the sample meets or exceeds that which is required for a given aggregate size. Lastly, let's summarize sampling from a road base. First, you'll need to mark the specific areas from where the samples will be taken, or use some type of a metal template. Get the sample from the entire depth and exclude the underlying material. We now want to combine our increments to form our field sample and, just as before, ensure that the size of the field sample equals or exceeds that which is recommended. And there are no significant differences between Ashto T2 and ASTM D75. And this will conclude Ashto T2 and ASTM D75 standard practice for sampling aggregates.